Now to new reports of a controversial police stop that ended in a death all caught on tape. Tonight, there is outrage over the case of this man who died after being restrained by police. And you'll see on this video, he repeatedly can be heard saying, quote, I can't breathe. Minneapolis police officers were approaching George Floyd as a potential forgery suspect last night, and they alleged that he resisted arrest. But it is now the police actions that are under scrutiny because of a video taken by a witness showing about five minutes of the interaction, including this controversial move where a police officer puts and compresses his knee on Floyd's neck, leading him to repeat, I can't breathe. Now, before I show you this, let me explain how we approach these matters, because it is obviously difficult to look at anything leading into somebody's death. What we're showing here is a very short clip once, so you can have some understanding of the larger context before we turn to the expert. Here is the clip. I can't breathe. Please, the knee in my neck. I can't breathe shit. Uh-huh. Bro, get him, get in the car, man. I will. Get him, get in the car. I can't move. Now, police acknowledge Floyd was unarmed. The FBI and state officials are now already investigating this incident. That's a day into it. If you watch our program, you may know that is much faster than many other such incidents where sometimes it takes more public pressure. Also, we want to show you the mayor separately announcing the four officers all involved in this particular arrest have now been fired. Time and again, we've seen black men die at the hands of law enforcement or more recently, not law enforcement, for no reason. They're will be an investigation conducted into the civil rights violations uh, by the FBI. Uh, And I think that was absolutely the right call. As for that simple plea, those three words, quote, I can't breathe, it is sadly familiar to many because it became something of a national protest anthem after Eric Garner, an unarmed black man in New York, had said those words, also caught on tape, repeatedly when a New York police officer was holding him in what was deemed an illegal chokehold before his death. Joining us now is Mark Claxton. He's a retired NYPD detective and director of public relations and political affairs for the Black Law Enforcement Alliance. Uh, He comes to this with a deep knowledge of both policing and these civil rights issues. Uh, Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. With regard to the incident itself, based on the available evidence, which includes a much longer video than the clip we showed, uh, as well as some reporting, but it is early, obviously. When you look at that available evidence, uh, what do you see in this incident? What I see is is something that's very difficult to watch and has unfortunately become, you know, all too frequent uh, in the communities of color in particular, and that is the pain, the anguish, And in this case, as in some other cases, the actual death uh, of of an individual. It is absolutely avoidable. Many of these cases are. And I think the fact that that we refuse to deal with the the role that race plays in the enforcement of law, uh, we'll continue to see these instances take place. And justice is so far away for these families. There have been historical cases similar to this one uh, that kind of give us a blueprint and a guide as the uh, the eventual outcome, perhaps, of this particular case. But it's very painful. It's very troubling, very difficult to watch. And there is more than just individuals. There is a community of individuals and, and, and civilians who, who are, are suffering behind it. Uh, at the practical level of police maneuvers, uh, we have seen these type of incidents. I mentioned the Garner case um, where although this will be litigated, so I will say it very carefully, there is an allegation of deadly force. Uh, As you know, and I think viewers know, there is a larger legal process for determining cause of death, autopsy, et cetera. But an allegation of deadly force um, that comes out of techniques um, that are not supposed to be deadly, Uh, a chokehold or a restraint um, is obviously not supposed to be a method to uh, execute someone in custody. Let me read from the Minneapolis uh, policy on this for your analysis for our viewers to understand, because they define uh, the neck restraint as compressing one or both sides of the individual's neck with an arm or leg without applying 
direct pressure to the trachea or airway. The guidance notes they shall not be used against subjects who are passively resisting. Um, as with all policing, this, most of this is at the local level of rules and laws. Um, what can you speak to both the rules and whether they were followed and what's shown on the video? Uh, we have to be very careful here, and that is, and, and this is the opportunity really to, to commend the response by Amir Fry and uh, Chief Arredondo, because what they realized and understood is that we can deal with the minutia of the specific rules and regulations as it relates to police use of force, et cetera. We can deal with some of the, the, the fringe uh, areas of the law, or we could deal with what we actually saw with our own eyes and deal with this case and other cases like it on an emotional uh, a, a responsible way to, to really address the issue at hand. Because if we have a debate or a discussion about the inter, inter, intricacies of police tactics, et cetera, then we miss the point. The point well, you, of- Let me of, jump in uh, though and say, are you, are you suggesting that legal or not, your concern is the restraint being discriminatorily used on this suspect when it wouldn't be used on a similar suspect uh, a forgery suspect who might happen to look different. That, that, that's part of the concern. And the, the larger concern is that sometimes we kind of, uh, you know, we, we lose the forest for the trees and that we have an individual here who should not be subjected to extrajudicial execution who was subjected to extrajudicial uh, execution. And if we don't examine some of the larger socio-political elements and, and, and issues, then we kind of miss the opportunity to prevent this from happening ever again. So we can, and, and respectfully, we can have discussions about the legal terminology and use of force issues here, but sometimes it's larger than even those mm -hmm. issues. And what I found, the communities of color have found, is that when we begin to focus on those issues, we kind of lose it because eventually there may be a federal inter inter intervention in this case, right. there may be some state intervention, et cetera. But what we want is justice in the sense of that no one should be subjected to this and no family should have to, to deal with this pain right. and no community should have to right. feel as if they are subjected to this time and time again. Mark Claxton, uh, thank you as always and appreciate your expertise on this. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.